All right, guys, glasses in. Plastics are screwed in for the most part. Just need to do the rear section here, do a little bit more cleaning. Only in Texas. Guys, don't forget the screw in the back here. Make sure you line that one up. There's quite a bit of little things that have been done and not everybody really appreciates that stuff. This is the pace setter, long tube H pipe with pipes, flow tubes, all two and a half inch. If you guys haven't checked out this uh, quick trick alignment setup, it's pretty badass. Back on David's GT, it is Monday and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not feeling it. So just got to deep dive and get into a groove and hopefully Get some traction i feel like just because so much of the car is ripped apart right now quarter plastics on the ground and quarter windows sitting here the rear seat and everything else it's just it's got to all go back together the good news is we got fresh tint that old purple tint that you guys saw before well that is gone we got some fresh legal stuff here and tint lady came and hooked that up over the weekend so that's looking really good. One last thing to worry about. Another pack of butyl tape, since this is all I had left from my last roll. Go ahead and install this. I've wiped all the surface down with rubbing alcohol, so it's all nice and clean and the tape is sticking nicely. The thing I'd recommend that you do is make a couple round rings, put them around the mounting hole areas. So I am going to be reusing the hardware and the factory hardware actually has butyl tape behind the washers. So instead of having it on the washer side, we'll have it on the outside here, which would be completely fine. Everything will get sealed up nice. All right, guys, glasses in. I'll put the nuts on the back. Just draw them in slowly, slowly. Just kind of keep going around until everything is nice and snug. And we should know that everything is nicely sealed properly with the tape. So that's the thing, you want to kind of sandwich that butyl tape and you don't want to do it all at once with one stud or another. You just want to keep going around, I'd say like three full motions. And then once you've done that, your glass is in. Remember the Scott Drake quarters. Don't have the Mustang inscription there. You can always get a vinyl sticker or maybe you can put your Instagram handle or Nickname, whatever you want there. But other than that, looks pretty good. Not too bad. Nice and flush. Fit really nice, especially here. That's pretty much like factory. Which ones? Those in there. <laughs> oh, those are fancy from Canada. Oh, mine's a gray, Dutch spec. Jerry's checking out my stash. Anyways, <laughs> we're moving right along here. Rear plastics are screwed in for the most part. Just need to do the rear section here, do a little bit more cleaning. Then we can go ahead and get our rear seats put back in. 
Now, rear belts. Unfortunately, at least to my knowledge, there is no aftermarket rear seat belt for your 90 through 93. You can get lap belts in black. You cannot get the shoulder style belts aftermarket. I think, and I did a test fit, I'm not going to do it in this car because David says that he brings his son around with him for rides and his son sits in the back and I wouldn't want to potentially compromise safety in a car that's not mine. But I do think because we got the aftermarket belts up front here. Now I took the retractor that bolts in the backside here and it does fit up there. You can get it to bolt down, you can get it to work, do all its things that it's required to do. However, with this piece, you would have to cut this off and allow this belt to not have this mounting point because this one is just pure shoulder style. It doesn't have the multiple connection point. The three point connection is just a two point connection. And this side down here would be fine to bolt down here. And like I said, if you cut this off, I think it would work. It'd be a matter of buying a set of these and trying it out to see if it does and going from there. Again, it's something that I would do in my own car, not necessarily in someone else's. And David's ultimate decision was to go ahead and leave the gray belts in the car. So maybe we'll find out if my theory works later on. Right now, I'm just actually putting this bottom piece in and we got the new plastics with the new belts, but unfortunately, they do not come with the little rubber bushings that go down here to keep things from clanking and making a bunch of sound. So this is the piece that you would normally need. And if you don't have them, here's an easy fix. Piece of heater hose and just cut yourself a little section off that you need, slide it over the bolt and it'll be on the cheap and you don't have to worry about putting in an order and waiting for it to come in just to install your seat belts. I thought it was the forklift, for real. guys so i ran into an issue here you can see where the factory clip for the top of the armrest goes it would normally be on the door panel and it's ripped that right off so what i'm actually doing is i have a different clip here that ultimately the position of the hole is a little bit further down and i've ground off the sides a little bit and i'm actually going to put it onto the door itself I'm just going to sneak it up in here like this, hopefully. And what that should allow me to do is, there we go, clamp onto the door instead of the door panel. And that's actually going to sandwich much nicer. They should have done it this way from the factory. I don't know why they didn't do it that way, but that is my strategy. So, now we got a clip that's going to grab that and not the door panel. So let's go ahead. We'll get this guy hopefully on. And guys, don't forget that screw in the back here. Make sure you line that one up and get it on there. People always forget that one. All right, the final detail of the interior is here, which is the belt buckles. And I opted to remove the seats. You have to, in most cases, there is a way that you can get a T50 socket in there if you're really creative, but if the bolts are super tight, then you're gonna be for a bad time. And I knew there was gonna be tons of shit underneath the seats here, and you can see all the spilt coffee from before when there was a cup holder console. So it would have been the old cup of coffee between the emergency brake and the bolster of the passenger seat. So we'll go ahead, get this all cleaned up, get those buckles swapped over, Nothing too entertaining here, but we'll get the job done 
And that'll be it for the interior. got the interior wrapped up here which is great i just need to bring the proper led bulb that goes in the hatch area here and then we can get these rear plastics bolted in and done need to see if i have that section of black carpet in the back there another hatch rug you know just kind of clean and vacuum stuff up i don't know if i have another one of these because like i said before they've cut that it does kind of work it's really hard to tell in reality but it would be nice to have the right piece on there and we got all of our stereo stuff. I've got the proper, you know, little cardboard flimsy piece of wood tray thing here. And of course we've got our base pro hub hiding underneath here. And I'll just have to get the, um, get it bolted down. So I need the little hook threaded, all thread rod that comes up. We'll be able to get that knocked out. Door panels are back on, quarter glass windows are in, seat belts are in, got the fender aligned here, which looks a million times better. And this is the weirdest thing, right? To the average person that sees the interior now versus when it first came in, well, there was no driver's side door panel bolted on when the car first came in, but there's quite a bit of little things that have been done and not everybody really appreciates that stuff. If the average person saw the car before and they see it now, are they gonna appreciate everything that's just been done? I hope so. I know the owner will because the owner knows all of the little quirks and the issues that the car had and we've gone through and pretty much fixed all of them. All right, so finishing touches here. I just got this H pipe in from Summit Racing. This is the pace setter long tube H pipe with pipes flow tubes all two and a half inch arrived next day there's been some mixed reviews on this H pipe people saying that you need to use the pace setter long tubes for it to work some people say it's too long some people say it's too short well we're about to find out exactly what the issue might be here the piece looks nice I think some people were complaining saying oh the welds look like a two-year-old did them to be honest the welds don't look too bad to me we'll see if there is no hanger off the transmission on this car so these aren't even necessarily going to be used so we'll see we'll get these they have the right flange type here the two bolt flanges that will go to the ball style flange on the back of the mac long tubes and the pipes flow tubes there are the correct ones instead of having that straight style pipe that they did you can see sitting on the wall there that i showed in the other video the both um pieces well actually no the h pipe came with all this hardware which is everything that we need to bolt up here on the back side all the flanges came with this setup and i think it was 250 dollars for the h pipe and the flow tubes delivered to my door so i'm going to go ahead now try and fit this up and ultimately see if it's going to work for our application All right, guys, I got everything wrestled up underneath there on the ground. I hate doing stuff on the ground. However, I just kind of wanted to prove the point and I was just crossing my fingers that it wasn't gonna be that bad. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. Once I get up on the lift, there'll be a couple of final tweaks. Just to probably move the flow tubes over a little bit, just maybe loosen stuff off and maybe move it all a little bit over towards the driver's side of the car. So and as part of the reveal, you guys will get to hear what it sounds like with the Mac long tubes and MagnaFlow cap back, which it did quiet it down a lot compared to just running it open headers, that's for sure. But I'm always surprised at how quiet MagnaFlow is when you don't have cats. But it still sounds really good, guys. I'm going to call it for today, get home, mess around with some stuff over there, 
and uh, we'll come back. I gotta do final alignment on this thing. Might change the oil out of it. Got David's GT up on the lift here, going underneath the underside, double checking everything, making sure everything looks good, making sure that the exhaust is nice and straight, not touching anything, no rattles. So everything looks good there. Just had to do a couple minor adjustments with the flow tubes and everything else. And this one kind of dips down a little bit, but ultimately it fit. We got the pace setter H pipe for the long tubes in here with the Mac long tubes as installed in the last video. Had to get O2 extenders and get those routed up to reach the O2 location back here because typically they're way up in this area here. So that's all done and out of the way. Had to fix up the low oil sending unit. That's always a pain. So got that cleaned up. Everything else looks pretty good. You know, a couple war wounds underneath the radiator support and pinch welds that, you know, they're, they're crushed. So that'll be an endeavor for when the car goes to body and paint to try and straighten all this out. Most likely with the side skirt off. You could do it with the side skirt on, but it's one of those things, just leave it until everything's coming off and it ultimately is gonna fix that fender gap right there. Again, guys, never jack your car up on these pinch welds because that's just gonna fold things and ultimately result in your fender getting kinked over. And if we peek under here, yeah, we can see everything's twisted over quite a bit there. And again, to get that done properly, the side skirt needs to come off. There was actually, it looked like someone jacked up on the transmission mount here. Managed to straighten this out pretty good. David had a set of aftermarket transmission mount brackets. And honestly, for what it was worth in terms of straightening this out, we pretty much got it. And just going to tack weld right here, just to make sure, because it looked like it kind of pulled away a little bit. So I'll just tack a bead of weld up there and otherwise we would have had to pull all of the carpet out and everything and i'll show you guys what those other brackets look like but for what it is i think this was the path of least resistance everything else checks out good we have an aluminum drive shaft energy suspension transmission mount here all the tubular k member and a-arm stuff last shop david told me apparently these weren't even tight so he had to go ahead and tighten those that was part of his frustration so that's pretty much the underside of the Fox, guys. Uh, I'm gonna actually pull the wheels off. He wants the calipers painted up red. So you can see all that yellow paint is starting to flake off. So we'll go ahead and give him a coating of paint, front and rear, nothing uh, too fancy. And otherwise this car is gonna be good to go. Final little review underneath the car here. We got everything all buttoned up and Ricky actually noticed a very important missing part. They didn't have the nuts on the bottom sides of the crossers for the subframe connectors that go through the rear seat bolts. And funny enough, I had these out when I pulled the seats to do the belts and there was no nuts laying on the ground. They came right out. So needless to say, nobody had them on there. So we got those tucked up there, got the cross member for the transmission tack welded up here. So that's all reinforced and good now. Magnaflow catback proved to be a little challenging, but we got everything straight, not touching, and in a pretty good position. We have to remember, we have Mac long tubes, pace setter H pipe, pipes, flow tubes, and a Magnaflow catback. So there's lots of various moving parts here, but overall, I'm really happy with how well we managed to get the exhaust tucked up and away in there. And ultimately, if he wants to weld it, or get it welded and tweaked by an official exhaust shop, I probably would recommend it as long as he's happy with everything. That way you're not worrying about the clamps. And we got his calipers all painted up in bright red here. And this was an on the, or on the car caliper paint job because whoever did the yellow painted them on there. There was overspray over everything. So the only thing that really could be done was cleaning them really well on the car. So use some super clean, Break clean, rubbing alcohol, hit them all with a scotch pad and any of the loose flaky stuff masked up with some plastic. Sprayed with some Seymour MRO, my favorite uh, powder coat in a can as I call it. Put the heat gun on and then dabbed on some white paint on the Cobra logo so things look kind of factory. So it's not a perfect job but 
the same time, I'm sure David could appreciate he doesn't want to pay five, six hours of my time to completely rip everything apart clean. You're almost better off just buying a new set of calipers at that point. But needless to say, the car can go back down on the ground. The detailer is going to come. He's going to do the inside and the outside. David can come pick it up tomorrow. All right, so busted out the old quick trick alignment tool because the alignment was totally off on this car. Not sure if when they installed the caster camber plates, they didn't know what they were doing, but managed to get everything pretty much in spec. If you guys haven't checked out this uh, quick trick alignment setup, it's pretty badass. You know, you got plates there to help adjust your toe so the wheels can go back and forth. Two measuring tapes, steering wheel holder, keep your steering wheel straight. And you can see here, I got everything pretty much bang on 70 and 70 for the toe. Got 0.1 degree of camber there. Let's see what we got here. Or a rate at 0.1. There we go. We got it. So pretty much bang on. Again, guys, this isn't going to be like 100% like laser straight, but... I guarantee you one thing, you'll drive down the road straight and you'll probably impress the alignment shop if you take it to one after to validate your work. So can't say enough for this product. I use it honestly all the time. And especially when you're into a lot of low stuff, a lot of guys don't want to touch it or sometimes you can't even get it up onto the alignment rack. So quick trick, quick tip, there you go.